<clears throat> okay, here we are. It is our first 105A video lecture. Let's see how this goes. Learning curve on this, definitely. But you see, I got a few words up on the board already. Physics 105A, first video lecture. First thing I want to talk about is taking notes. So you want to take notes as before. Constructing a good set of notes is important. I'm trying to put this together as logically as possible. And you have the advantage this time of being able to stop the video and fill in some words. So I hope that goes well. The board is a bit small. We're gonna use it today. I can also take this show elsewhere. Right now I'm in my office. I've set it up as a little studio, as it were. Homework problems also as before. In the running text of the lecture, I'm setting up and starting the homework problems for you. I have a couple good ones, a couple good ideas for today that would be due as before next Friday. So you'll have to turn them into me with an email picture, something I can print out, okay? Something I can comfortably print out. Exams as previously scheduled is what this says, and we'll see. Um, this whole situation is developing right now, but if we do it that way, if it goes that way, we'll also send them out to you and receive them back from you by email. I will also be sending an email with all of this information as well, and we'll be in touch, of course. Good, so here we are. Where were we in Physics 105A? I'm not gonna do that review. We ended up with a review last time, but I'll just mention we had one-dimensional dynamics and in particular, we had small oscillations and we did quite a bit of that. and some of our Fourier series and things like that were part of that whole theme. So now we're back to Newton's law. I'll write it out for us. Acceleration, force of position, velocity and time in three dimensions. And I have a couple of interesting problems for us. You know, we're headed for the central force problem, the Kepler problem, but right now we're gonna do a couple of problems for the next couple of days that, uh, um, that connect to things we've already done. Okay. So the two problems that I wanna tackle are the first one, is projectile motion with friction. Okay, we've done projectile motion, and we've also done just the constant acceleration problem, which we always want to be able to get as our limiting cases. So projectile motion with friction is historically pretty important. Ballistics, for example, and also very complicated. <clears throat> but what we'll do is take the simple case, namely with a linear friction law. So a linear friction law can be solved explicitly and exactly. It doesn't actually cover the details of the much more complicated cases, but it'll have all the qualitative features. It'll be interesting. So projectile motion with friction, we're doing the linear law. And I can also indicate what the nonlinear law would look like and what its problems would be. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. We have as our force law, the weight minus linear in the velocity itself, k times b. This is the linear law, and I'll go ahead and say something about the nonlinear law as well. 
try to write the nonlinear law down. So this is linear. Let's open up a little space here. k times v. Nonlinear. What's the nonlinear one going to look like? Well, it's going to oppose the direction of motion. I have some k here. Okay, it's going to oppose the direction of motion, but we're going to have some function um, phi of the magnitude of v times v. And as soon as you bring this in here, you're mixing components, you know, v being the square root of vx squared plus vy squared. And that means these di two differential equations that we're going to have here are actually coupled. And not only are they coupled, but they're coupled with a very complicated thing. So nonlinear can't be solved um, analytically. Um, good. So, <clears throat> and again, it has to. It couples them because it's a function essentially of the speed, and then this is just giving you the direction, opposing the direction of motion. So okay, we're going to leave this one and set up the equations of motion for the linear case. So again, I'll erase this right here. And what do we have? We'll take our standard coordinate system like this way. Gravity's pointing down. And we get mx second derivative is, right, g is pointing down. So the x component will be kx dot. K okay, V sub X, get a minus sign there, and Y second derivative will be minus MG minus K Y dot. Okay, and these can be simplified when we want to actually work on them. So we could have D V sub X dp is equal to minus k p sub x k over m. Right? We're going to divide both sides by m now and dp sub y dp is equal to minus g minus k over m p sub y. So there's our set that we're going to integrate. You guys are going to integrate this, okay? So Let's get this, let's set this up a little more. It's an interesting problem. We've done both of these problems before. In fact, we did them and looked at their limiting cases when k goes to zero. So we're going to build up the solution we had originally, except now they're acting together, although the equations are decoupled. That's why this is going to be no problem to solve. Equations are decoupled. This is just vx and x. This is just vy and, and y. So we'll set those up, and I will already formulate the homework problem right here. So find dx of t, dy of t, and then we'll integrate it one more time, x of t and y of t. And then, and this is where it stops being so pretty, but there's going to be, it's going to be worth it. We want to find y of x, okay. And then we'll want to analyze these things. So I'm going to talk right now, before we go on, about the qualitative nature of this type of motion. Okay. 
let's see, I'll just use the bottom of the board because I want to keep these equations of motion up there for the moment. Okay, these I just translated right here. So if you've ever watched a game or played a game of badminton, that is a projectile with quite a bit of friction. And let's compare tennis versus badminton. Tennis is right here, and what you get is your parabolic trajectory. Okay. So this is your tennis trajectory, your badminton trajectory looks like this. Shoots up very steeply, they, you know, they hit the thing really hard, shoots up, drops down, and what we're going to find in our problem, our problem, what we're going to find is that there is actually an, uh, an asymptotic distance here. So x is not restricted in the parabola, in the parabolic motion. I'll just write parabola here, parabola. Who knows what the name of this curve is? Okay, there's a parabolic motion. And in the case with friction, so our problem with friction, running around room right there. <clears throat> okay, what we're gonna run into is that the motion in X is actually restricted. Never quite makes it to some X some maximum distance there. So that's a real qualitative difference. Okay. And what we'll see, we'll see it unfold in the solutions right here. Okay, so having said that, I'm just going to, and having said that we want to find dx, dy, xy, and this thing right here in particular, I'm just going to go back and start the problem, start solving this and kind of remind you guys of what's going on here. Okay, so any words to put here? Well, I say you can always stop the tape and put some of those words that go along with this thing that we have that asymptotic distance that we're not gonna reach. Okay, let's go ahead and actually I'm just gonna rewrite these up here so I have them in front of me, so I have the D, DX. D minus K over M DX. Minus G minus K over M <coughs> visa Y. Good, I'll erase everything else. Get some room up here. So let's just tackle this one right here. Okay, so what do we have here? We have d dx divided by dx minus k over m dt. We've done this. We integrate um, dx zero to dx. And so we'll have Vx, so natural log Vx over Vx zero is equal to minus K over Mt. And here's our result. Vx of T is equal to Vx zero e to the minus over mt. Good, we've been there before. And now let's integrate this. Let's integrate this and get the x minus x zero. So x minus x zero integral v x zero e to the minus k over mt. Done this before. <coughs> we'll get the 
bx0 uh, minus m over k t to the minus k over m t 0 to t like that and that turns into m over k vx0 1 minus e to the minus k over m t. And actually these two solutions, especially this last one, are enough to, to finish the discussion here and then let you guys finish it. So this is x minus x0. And when t is equal to 0, x is equal to x0, so that looks fine. Um, now, when t goes to infinity, we see right here, t goes to infinity, this exponential vanishes, and we have this finite distance where x is equal to x0 plus this finite distance m v x0 over k. So there's a finite distance involved, and of course there's a finite or an infinite time. Both of these things are going to play a role. By the way, I'm going to leave the discussion here. I'll say one more thing. We could solve, and we're going to have to solve for time here. So solve or T. Okay. That already looks like it's not going to be so much fun. But the reason we need that time is because in our problem where we wanted to find y as a function of x, we have to eliminate the time. We're actually going to have to plug in this time from this expression into here. We're going to have two forms of the time. So The simple expression is that we're going to be able to have 1 minus e to the minus k t over m. I'm going to solve for that. Let me go ahead and get rid of this now. So just solve for this. It'll be k over m v 0 x x minus x 0. I'm saying we're going to have this thing available as a substitution. Now, if we actually had to solve for the time, we would have uh, something like, should I just wing it here? Let's see, we would have t would be equal to minus m over, and I can keep the board here. this. Okay. Okay, we did this. You guys have that? A little more board. So, we got t equals minus m over k natural log of 1 minus k over m v naught x x minus x zero. Okay, and you're thinking that isn't such a great substitution to make. But what we're going to see from that expression and the one I just erased, if we go back to that picture of ours, is that as x minus x0, in other words, as kx minus x0 over, over this here, as this thing approaches 1, then this natural log goes to negative infinity and then minus the negative infinity. In other words, that's for the, that's giving you that t going to infinity. Okay. And so that x minus x0, it's the same argument I had a moment ago. We'll just let start at the origin. We're getting that maximum value there when t goes to infinity. The whole expression, okay, when you, ex when you when you integrate this thing up the second time, you're going to get the, the GT. Um, 
when you integrate it the second time, when you get the, v, the Y of T, you're going to get the GT, and then you're going to have to plug that T in right there. Just write it out large enough so that it's not too intimidating looking. And again, the, this is going to express the fact that we're reaching this maximum distance like so. Okay. Here's X of Y. Okay, that's enough. You guys can tackle the rest of that whole thing and, and turn that in. So that was one problem. The other problem is uh, a little more beautiful than this one. But you know, this is, this is in contact with projectile motion. If you were ambitious, you could try to expand this thing out and get the parabola out of it. Okay. Good, so enough on this one. Projectile motion with a linear friction law. It's got the qualitative behavior of things you really see in real life. And you dig into here, you're, you're actually seeing the action in terms of these behavior of these functions. Good. Okay, the other problem. So once again, let's go ahead and write Newton's law. This is our second problem. Yeah, we have force, position, velocity, and time. So what's what's this problem going to be? We're going to have the motion of a charged particle in cross electromagnetic fields. So we have m r second derivative equals q e plus q b cross b. This problem is going to give a really interesting characteristic result. It's going to touch on the solution techniques we've been learning already. So it's going to be really nice. Good. So what do we have here? What we're looking at is the scenario where we've got x and y. Z is coming out of the board. It actually plays a role here. And we're looking at a magnetic field. Let B equal um, B times K hat. So coming out of the board here. And E is equal to E times J hat. So pointing up here. So right, we've got E in this direction and B pointing out of the board. And we're going to release a particle here from rest, or we can inject it into the board any way we want, but suppose we release it here from rest. It's a, an amazing property that the motion is cycloidal. Since we've studied the cycloid, it's a perfect time to touch base with it again. So we have to write this down. And so far, we would have x second derivative is equal to that one, Q over M, B cross B, X component, and Y second derivative is going to be Q over M, E, because E has the Y component, right there, E has the Y component, plus Q over M, B cross B, Y component. Okay, so there's our differential equation. We have to find these X and Y components, and we'll do that by doing the old determinant trick for the oh, trick involved actually. Dx, dy, dz, and then zero, zero, b, because the b only has the z component. So we get i hat times b dy plus j hat. Actually, I can put the minus sign out right now. Minus j hat times b dx. And the k hat will have nothing. Okay, so there is our v cross b. Do I have room on the board here? Let's see. 
keep this and erase these here. So bad form with the erasing, but what are you going to do? So here I have Q over M B V Y. Y and right now actually let's Y dot and here I have Q over M minus B X dot okay so there's the coupled linear differential equations So the solution of these is going to be fun. It'll be enough for me to write them down and give a couple of tips. What are we doing here? Write them down, give a couple of tips. And so I'll just write homework. Here's what I'll do. Homework. Trajectory is a cycloid. Trajectory is cycloidal. How about that? So that's the homework problem. Here's our di differential equations. You want to find x of t, y of t. You can go back in your notes and find, remind yourself what the cycloid looked like. Okay, so to get started on this, we'll use this little corner of the board. To get started on this, let's write this as d v x d t is equal to q b over m v sub y. And the second equation, d v y d t equal to QE over M minus QB over M V sub X. So this here is nice. Okay. Do I need my ruler to point with? So the derivative of Vx is proportional to V sub y, derivative of Vy is proportional to V sub x. So how are you going to solve this? The solution strategy is to take the time derivative of the second equation, and then that constant will be differentiated away. You'll have minus this times the time derivative of V sub x which we'll then be able to plug in right here. So that'll be our first step. It's going to be several steps to make it to the solution. I am going to erase all of this stuff and kind of finish up by doing a little bit of what I said here. Okay. So this was, and by the way, did we write it down or did I say it? I definitely said it. Motion of a charged particle and cross um, E and B fields. Okay. Put that as your heading. Motion of a charged particle, electromagnetic field, and electromagnetic fields. Here we go. Get this here. Okay. 
So next step, next, we take our second equation, we have d squared dy dt squared is equal to, that's a constant, zero, we get minus qb over m dvx dt. equals minus, now the dvx dt is going to bring another qb over m, so minus qb over m squared uh, v sub y, okay, dvx dt v sub y. Let's look at this a little more closely, v squared v sub y equals minus So that's an equation whose solution we can just write down on the spot. Okay. That's right, that has this form. So that's cosine omega t plus sine omega t. Okay. V sub y, you know, is a cos omega t. Plus b sine omega t, and there's your omega right there, qb over m. So, you know, I'm going to state that for you guys. So, you get that solution, okay? Harmonic oscillator type, sinusoidal solution, cosine sine. Um, but you're not nearly done yet because then you want to find, it's going to give you your v sub y, and then you have to keep going in here. So, now you have your v sub y. But that's dvx dt, so you can get your v sub x. You bring both of them in here and integrate that up. And uh, when you're all done, you can take your initial conditions here and, and get out the actual cycloid. So I think, I think we're about done, but let's wrap this up because we've just got our program for the next couple of days. We want to work through these problems, understand them, solve them. So I'll probably pick up where I left off here next time. I think I'll probably do a few more steps with you on both of these. But that's what we that's what we have for our next homework assignment. Got till next Friday, so no problem at all. Let's see. I will um some room here. Yeah. Let me just use this right up here. See, we can just read the answer off. We have b sub y is equal to, of course, now b and e are, have been used as constants, so we need something else. So we could say a cosine omega t plus c sine omega t. And omega is equal to this Q B over M. So yeah, now we have B sub Y. And go in there. Direct integration, trivial so to speak, doesn't leave the sinusoidal functions, gives us the B sub X. And then the derivative of B sub Y can be matched up with this right here. Okay. Um, yeah, there may be there may be another constant pop up here, but we'll leave it at that. Okay, let's see how to wrap this up. This was the first video lecture. We can do them in here. I'll get some feedback from you guys one way or the other. We can also I can take this camera of mine. To a, to a larger board, although this has its charm, but we can definitely uh, expand on the whole operation. Okay, I'm going to shut this down.